Alright all, so uh, unfortunately the Zoom recording I did of this never saved properly, so I'm just going to run through this one more time. So this is sculpting tiling textures within ZBrush. So we can do this straight into ZBrush. So what we want to do is go into our documents and we want to resize this to a square. So we can go here and type in something like 1024, something that fits into the resolution of your screen. And we want to hit crop. Okay, so now we've got a square document to work with. Next, we want to go to our brushes here. Um, sorry, our, our different objects. And we want to find the plane, uh, plane 3D. And we can click uh, create poly mesh 3D from that. So now we've got a plane and we just want to drag that onto, onto the screen and you can hold shift to snap it into position. So then we can go to edit and now we have a 3D plane. So you want to make sure that the floor is in the right position so that you know it's the right way up. And next we want to fill this screen. So if we go down here, we can go to frame and frame all. Now that plane is now one to one with our canvas. So you can see if we uh, sculpt into here, that's all we can see of the canvas. Now, obviously this isn't uh, sculpting as a tile and texture. So if I undo that, um, first of all, I'm just going to subdivide this. Now, if I go to geometry and try to subdivide it as it is, you can see it starts to curve the edges over and we don't want that. So we want to turn off smart subdivisions and then just divide it. That'll just straight up divide the mesh. Um, so I want to go up to about maybe, uh, for now I'm going to go up to a million. Uh, let's just see that. Yeah, lots of detail there. You know, maybe actually I'll go a little bit lower than that. So for now that should do. Um, and I'm going to put a nicer material on as well because I really hate that mm, wax. So what we want to do is go to any brush that we're going to sculpt with and we go up to brush and down to curve and then go to wrap mode and turn that to one. Now if we draw on the canvas here and go over the edge, it'll come back on the other side. So we can start to sculpt this as a tiling texture. So then this can be baked in Substance Painter and it should stay tiling. Now there is one issue with this and you can see here, it started to pull up the lip of the corner of this. So that's not good. Obviously that's gonna end up having a hole in the tiling texture. So we want to stop that. So what we can do is actually use this as our camera plane and actually create another one to actually tile from. So what I'm gonna do here is just zoom out. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate this one. And then this first one, the original one, is going to be what we uh, snap the camera to. But the second one, we're going to increase the size of it. So we can go down here to uh, deformation and we want to find scale or size even. And now it's set to XYZ. So if we just grab the slider and turn it up, something like that. And this should give us a nice outer edge to be able to sculpt onto. And we'll stop making that um, strange shape. So now all we need to do is snap back to the original camera plane. Um, and we can even grab that and just move it so it's back a little bit okay and we're going to frame that one and then we're going to switch to our uh, sculpting plane so we can turn the camera plane off there so now we're on the sculpting plane uh, maybe even rename it just to make sure that you don't lose track of that okay and then we can lock the camera because what we don't want to do is accidentally turn this while we're sculpting so we can lock that camera. That way we can't move, we can't zoom out of this. It's just locked into that position. Now, if we try to sculpt on this plane and go off the edge, it'll come back on the other side nice and neatly without any kind of gaps or holes opening up. So one thing we need to remember about doing this is that every brush you use needs to have that wrap mode put on and not everything works with it. So most of the brushes will, uh, but it's kind of only stuff like that. Uh, we can do stuff like uh, we go to geometry and go to uh, clay polish here. We can do that, but there will be subtle differences that will get worse over time if you do this kind of thing too much so that these uh, tiling edges won't line up eventually. So you need to be as very careful with that. And the same goes with Dynamesh as well. You can't really Dynamesh this because Dynamesh doesn't curve for the wrap mode. It doesn't understand. And even though the mesh will be quite similar, uh, it will create variations that will get worse and worse as you sculpt. So you do need to be pretty careful with what you do. And you can't kind of do too much with this. You can't go too extensive with this. Okay, so then we're going to start sculpting now. But one of the main things we need to remember to do is that 
wrap mode is on. Without that, this isn't a tiling texture and it's very easy to forget to do it. One way of making sure that you've got wrap mode on because it's so, so easy to forget to put it on and then you might get like half an hour into your sculpt, realize that you hadn't had wrap mode on and it suddenly it doesn't, it doesn't tile anymore. And that goes for uh, the same, whether it's smooth brush, with smooth, you need wrap on as well. So I like to put the wrap button somewhere where I can see it all the time and quickly identify if I've not got it on or not. It gives me the best chance of not forgetting. So to do that, we want to go to preferences, go to configuration and enable customize. And then you need to go to your brushes, go to wrap mode. And if we hold control, alt and left click and drag that, we can put that somewhere on our screen so I'm just going to put it here there's a nice space for it then I'm going to go to preferences and store config and then turn off enable customization now I've got that wrap mode on there and say if we change brushes say to smooth brush you can see wrap mode turns off so I just need to hold smooth brush that's holding shift put wrap mode on one and now let's just put a little bit here if I smooth this you can see it's smoothing back on the other side um, so that should now uh, that should now tile nicely. So let's start with a little bit of uh, shape building here. And again, you want to be careful not to go too extreme with this because it's going to be very difficult um, to get some really, like, say, over the top shape. And when doing stuff like this, you know, you want to try to not have these too zoomed in because then um, you'll only have a few features and then we'll those features will be extremely obvious when they when it starts tiling um, so you know you want to kind of be a good distance away from whatever surface you're sculpting and also you want to avoid doing anything too obvious so you know if you've got like a, a shape you know right in the middle that obvious is quite obvious that it's a you know a distinct shape then that is just going to be super super obvious as soon as you start tiling it and, and make the whole reason of having a tiling texture a little bit pointless so you know have some variation in there you can have little bits of interest but make sure that they're not too obvious so i've just built up some different shapes there and then i'm going to go in maybe with the hard polish And again, see, I started I started sculpting on that then and I didn't have wrap mode on. It's that easy to forget. I'm literally doing this tutorial and I forgot. So let's put wrap mode on and then I'm just going to flatten off some areas. And this kind of thing, it takes a while. I don't normally get anything I like straight away. It takes a lot of back and forth. So once you started getting something that you like, we can then um, sharpen it up a little bit. I'm going to use the clay polish here. Now, once you've got it to a level that you're happy with, um, you might want to smooth off some jagged edges. We can then subdivide this again. Um, this time we're going to use smart subdivision. Subdivide it again and again. Now we've got a nice smooth mesh that we can go into and, and neaten off and get some of that finer level of detail. And you can use alphas with this, just make sure that the brush that you're using the alpha with, if you want to drag out some stone alphas, make sure that wrap mode is on that as well. So if I load some alphas in here and go to something like um, the layer, drag and put one of these alphas on. Make sure that it's on wrap mode and then drag this out. You can see it'll come back on the other side so I can get some texture in that way because the surface noise won't work properly with wrap. Okay, so the longer you spend at this stage, the better, but how you do this is very much dependent on um, the level of stylization you're going for. You know how much detail you want in that. You don't want to do too much detail if you're going for quite stylized or else it's going to look really odd. And you know, um, how 
this actually looks as Italian texture is kind of hard to tell until you actually get it baked, save it out and put it onto something and make it tile. Uh, and oftentimes I would go through that process, have a look at it, see if it, it's tiling well, and then come back to this stage and change the way I've sculpted it a little bit to remove any areas that are a bit too dense or a little bit too repetitive. Now that's kind of a long process at first, but it's quite easy to update because once you've saved that as a texture, you've got it through Substance Painter. If you change the sculpt here, literally all you need to do is go back to Substance Painter and rebake that high poly and all your layers and everything will update with it and you just you just save it out again. So it's, you know, it's a one-time setup thing at least, so it's not that bad. Now you can combine this with the tiling textures uh, YouTube video that I've got. Uh, so this is the array mesh. There's no reason why you can't put the uh, plane behind that and have this sculpted in the background and that's really useful if say you wanted grout between things. Um, it's kind of hard to do that with the array mesh but if you wanted some surface that has a lot of maybe a mud in it and just some bricks you can do that. But if you're more comfortable with sculpting than you are say with a designer this is a very good way of doing it. And I've even seen some people do both in their own portfolios, literally have zebra stuff and designer stuff, depending on kind of <laughs> whatever they want to do. Maybe they just feel different that day and they just want to do something different. So uh, very easy. So this next thing you do after this, so we just unlock the camera and zoom out. You can see we've got this uh, tiling layer, this big one. And if we come up to the top here and just turn the other layer on, uh, in the background there we have the camera mesh so let's just move that forward a little bit so all we need to do is save out this mesh and that will be the one that we bring into substance painter so let's just export the camera mesh and then we want to save out the high poly one now at the moment it's a million you know, that should be okay, but you can decimate it if you just want it to be a little bit lighter, but try not to lose any of the detail that you've got on there. So I'm gonna export this out as a sculpt. All right. So in Substance Painter, the next step is to create a new document and we wanna load in our sculpt tile, so the camera plane, and we should get something like this. So then we wanna to go to our texture set settings, go down to bake mesh maps, and we wanna load in the high poly version. And we want to make sure that we have plenty of space in the cage because this is quite deep and the plane was, you know, not perfectly on top of it. So I'm just going to set this to something like that. And then um, just to make sure everything's working properly, I'll just do a quick 512. Um, and what I'm doing here is just making sure, first of all, it's lined up and that there's no high spots on it. So that looks like it's picked up all that information. So once you're happy with that, you can come back here, go to uh, anti-aliasing, turn that up a bit and then change this to something a bit higher, like uh, one or two K. So now we've got this plane with all this lovely information. And so we can use our smart materials, uh, smart masks to texture this, to pick out the high points and to get dirt in all the nooks and crannies. And then we can file, export, textures. And once that's exported, open up your UE4 scene. Once in UE4, you want to bring in those textures that we made and make sure that you turn off sRGB for your mix map. And then you want to make a new material and add them just in the same way as we normally do. Uh, but this time we need a text quad because this is a tiling texture. Now you can make this tile within Maya by just scaling the UVs once you've applied the texture in Maya. That's if you maybe have other kind of textures on your model as well and you need precise control over the way they're going to appear, appear on your model. But if you just use them as a tiling texture within UE4, you want some uh, tiling texture control. So what we need to do is right click and type in TEXC and we want to find a texture coordinate node. And then we want to hold M and we want to click to make a multiply. And then we want to hold one and right click to make a uh, constant. And then we want to right click that constant and turn it into a param parameter. And then we can call this a uh, tile. 
and then we can put that in B and put the text squad in A and then plug that into the UVs of our all our textures. Okay, now this being a parameter is going to give us control over this, but we need to make an instance of this material to do that. Uh, but before we do that, we need to make sure that this tile parameter is set to one, because as you can see, the uh, material is blank at the moment because it's tiling by zero. So if we put that to one, we can see we've got our material there. Hit save. And then we can close that. And then we can right click that rock tile master material, create material instance. And then we want to drop that material instance on our object that we want this tile texture to be on. So there we can see it's nicely on that cube. So if we double click the rock tile instance, you can see that we have this little parameter here uh, called tile. So we can tick that on and then we can increase the tiling by dragging up the uh, number. OK, so you can see uh, this looks like it's tiling OK. It's quite obvious that it's a tile, especially because these spots here, these long lines uh, must have been a bit of a flat spot in my sculpt. So what I could do at this point is go back to my ZBrush file and just um, sculpt that up a little bit try to get rid of some of these more obvious shapes like this kind of oval shape here. Um, but overall, there is no errors and that's the main thing. So if we look at the tiling on this, we can see that there isn't any um, harsh cutoff points where it's failed to actually tile properly. So we can see this is a success. And any kind of tile that you do is going to be obvious that it's tiling at some point. Um, and that's why we use them techniques like we did with the uh, environment texturing tutorials to kind of break up the repeating patterns in this stuff. So we could do the same with this or we could do vertex painting and painting a, uh, painting a second tiling texture to break that up. There's a few different techniques but mainly this is a successfully tiling texture and quite a fast technique to get something like this out when it's needed.